The citizens of Alabasta have grown rebellious in recent years. Riots and uprisings have thrown the kingdom into turmoil. Then, one day, I learned of a secret organization called Baroque Works. The boss deceives his minions with talk of an ideal country. However, the true aim of Baroque Works is the conquest of Alabasta. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. And today we're going to be stepping into the realm of nostalgia to discuss some of the most classic villains in the entire series being Baroque Works. Baroque Works is a criminal organization that operated within the first half of the Grand Line and were introduced into the series during the Reverse Mountain Arc, going on to serve as the primary antagonist for the entirety of the Alabasta Saga. The group was founded by former Warlord of the Sea, Sir Crocodile, with the sole goal of throwing the Kingdom of Alabasta into civil war, so that he could take advantage of the chaos to reach upon a glyph said to detail the location of the ancient weapon Pluton. And in order to achieve this, Crocodile crafted an incredibly complex and secretive society in which members were primarily anonymous. And in fact, up until the climax of the plan, the large majority of even Baroquirk's upper staff had no idea that they were in fact working for Sir Crocodile, who was only referred to by the codename of Mr. Zero. And these codenames would become a common feature through the top two tiers of agents within the organization, which were referred to as the Frontier and Officer Agents respectively. These individuals were placed in paired cells with a male member being given a number and a female member being referred to as a day of the week or a holiday, with a holiday name typically denoting a higher rank than the standard day of the week codenames. So to see this naming scheme in action, let's begin by examining the Frontier Agents. And the lowest ranking member we actually met in the series was Mr. Eleven. You may recognize him as the member who was captured by Smoker, but a fun little often neglected in fact is that he also ended up dueling to Shigi and he lost, thus losing his Mato Blade Kashu in the process. But of course, Mr. Eleven went on to be assassinated by another branch of Baroque Works, which we'll get into in a bit. But for now, it's important to note that his frontier partner was Miss Thursday, although unfortunately we have never seen her because she ran away when the pair encountered Smoker's unit. And just while we're on the topic of unknown agents, rather unfortunately, we've never met Mr. Twelve or his partner Miss Saturday either, although they were briefly mentioned by Vivi. Moving down the line though, the next pair we have are Mr. Ten and Miss Tuesday, who were never shown in the series. However, they were planned to be included at one stage with their concept art being displayed in One Piece Color Walk 2. However, next up we have a very familiar duo being Mr. Nine and Miss Wednesday. Now, not only do they have the distinction of being the first Baroque Works agents we meet in the series, but Miss Wednesday is actually Princess Vivi in disguise who managed to infiltrate the organization in an attempt to save her kingdom, Alabaster, from its nefarious schemes. Mr. Nine, however, had no ulterior motive in joining Baroque Works, However, he did become very loyal to his partner during their time together. Taking one step up, we have the partnership of Mr. Eight and Miss Monday, who were another rare example of loyalty within the organization, especially in the case of Mr. Eight, better known as Igaram, who like Miss Wednesday, was also an undercover agent for the Kingdom of Alabaster, seeking to thwart Mr. Zero's plans. Meanwhile, Miss Monday followed a similar arc to Mr. Nine, and in fact, these two cells of agents would make up the bulk of the forces who encountered the Straw Hats on Whiskey Peak and attempted to claim Luffy's bounty. However, after being thoroughly defeated by not only the Straw Hats, but also some officer agents of Baroque Works, the pairs split up, with Vivi being taken in by the Straw Hats, and Igaram, after seemingly being killed, making his way back to Alabaster. After this event though, Mr. Nine and Miss Monday decided to form something of a partnership of their own, deciding to stay on Whiskey Peak, and the two would even go on to have a child together. Beyond this, we have Mr. Seven and Miss Father's Day, who denotes the first use of a holiday in the female partner's name, meaning that we must be getting into some serious territory. Well, so you'd think. It's actually hard to tell, to be honest, because they didn't do a whole lot other than guard Crocodile's bomb at the climax of the Alabaster Saga. Although I suppose Miss Father's Day was responsible for sniping Pell out of the air, but in any case, these two were outplayed by Nefertari Vivi, the former Miss Wednesday, thus failing their mission and falling into unknown status. Rather interestingly though, the Mr. Seven we know in the series was not the first agent to hold this codename, as the previous Mr. Seven was actually sent to recruit Zoro into the organization. However, he was killed by the future Straw Hat Swordsman. And what you're seeing right now is a sketch that Oda drew in an SBS of what the original Mr. Seven would have looked like. Handsome devil he is. Now sadly for our final two frontier agents, Mr. Six and Miss Mother's Day, this is another pair that have never actually made an appearance, but were mentioned by Vivi. In fact, the only information we have in regards to anything concerning these roles is another SBS question where a fan asked how Mr. Seven's appearance would change if he were promoted to Mr. Six, which is a fantastic picture because if it wasn't obvious by now, the appearance of all male agents are heavily inspired by plastering them with their literal number. But with that, we have dealt with the frontier agents and it's time to move on to the highest grading in Baroque works with the officer agents. And commencing this upper echelon, we have Mr. Five and Miss Valentine, more uncommonly known as Jem and Mikita respectively. These two are very notable because they are both Devil Fruit users, with Mr. Five wielding the Bomu Bomu no Mi and Miss Valentine having consumed the Kilo Kilo no Mi, making them immediately more dangerous than any of the agents we've previously examined. 
These two first appeared on Whiskey Peak, having been sent by Mr. Zero to deal with a spy within their ranks. Although whether or not they knew that both Miss Wednesday and Mr. Eight were spies is a bit vague, but it didn't matter anyway, because the two of them, along with Miss Monday and Mr. Nine, teamed up against Mr. Five and Miss Valentine anyway. Although their ultimate defeat came by the hands of Luffy and Zoro, who knocked them out in a single strike after the agents got in the way of their fight. The pair would later appear on Little Garden, teaming up with other officer agents, but were beaten once again by the Straw Hats, although to be fair, it was a much harder fought battle this time around. Next up is Mr. Four and Miss Merry Christmas, both of whom were present for Operation Utopia on Alabaster, with Miss Merry Christmas, real name Droffy, being a Zoan type devil fruit user who can transform into a fearsome mole beast. Meanwhile, Mr. Four's only real skill lies in being able to hit things super hard with a bat, hence his real name Babe, being named after Babe Ruth. And while he himself isn't a devil fruit user, his dog gun certainly is. Lasso is a gun that has somehow quote unquote ate the Inu Inu no Mi model dachshund and spends its life sneezing out explosive baseballs for Mr. Four to hit at opponents. And despite this sheer dog power, this cell would go on to be defeated by the straw hat combination of Usopp and Chopper. Edging closer to the top, our next dynamic duo consists of Mr. Three and Miss Golden Week, also known as Galdino and Marianne. Now these two are the first pair of agents that I would actually call incredibly dangerous, as Mr. Three has a paramecia type devil fruit that allows him to conjure and manipulate wax, although he is somewhat mentally held back by his artistic nature, which means that he can't operate on anything less than a grand scale. Now Miss Golden Week also has an incredible power, although contrary to popular belief, it is not a result of a devil fruit. Miss Golden Week is simply such a good painter, allegedly a realist, that she can manipulate emotions and actions simply through her artistic ability alone. And together, these two came very close to defeating the Straw Hats, but thanks to some heroics from Usopp and Karu, that was not meant to be. Then we move to Mr. Two, Bon Clay, whose real name is Bentham. He is a unique existence within Baroque works because he does not have a partner as he represents both male and female due to his Okama nature. As a result, he gets assigned a combination of code names, being a number and a holiday. So Mr. Two is obvious, but in case you're not aware, Bon Clay is a specific night of the Obon Festival. Now holding on to one of the highest strengths within the organization, Bon Clay holds some amazing skills both in his combative abilities of Okama Kempo, as well as his devil fruit, the Mane Mane no Mi, which essentially allows him to take on the appearance of others, which he mainly used to impersonate the King of Alabaster and was an integral aspect in sparking the nation's civil war. However, during Operation Utopia, he was defeated in combat by Sanji. And finally, for the officer agents, we have Mr. One and Miss Doublefinger, being Dust Bones and Zala. Both of these figures are Devil Fruit users of the Super Super no Mi and the Toge Toge no Mi, respectively, and their powers are incredibly handy for conducting assassinations. Despite this, Miss Doublefinger would go on to be bested by Nami, while Mr. One was impossibly cut down by Zoro. But then, of course, we arrive back at the top with Sir Crocodile as Mr. Zero, but he also had a partner, codenamed Miss All Sunday better known these days as Nico Robin, archeologist of the Straw Hats. However, Baroque Works is a bit more expansive than this, featuring two much larger groups of individuals known as the Millions and the Billions. In total, there were 1,800 Millions serving in Baroque Works, all of whom also seem to adopt code names, with the ones we're aware of being Miss Katharina, Mr. Beans, and Mr. Shimizu. Now, as for the Billions, they are rather counterintuitively a higher rank than the Millions, and there were about 200 of them in existence. I say counterintuitively because you'd think that there would be more Billions than there are our millions, but whatever. And just like the millions, we only know the names of three of them, which are Mr. Mello, Akumai, and Mr. Love, who quite notably wears a jacket declaring his love for Miss Valentine at all times. Billions are very interesting though, because they are the group directly in line to be promoted to frontier agents, and each of them is actually said to be about as strong as the agents who were assigned numbers higher than 10. So that would be Mr. 11, Miss Thursday, Mr. 12, and Miss Saturday. In fact, speaking of Mr. 11, the billions are the group responsible for killing him, although most of the billions were defeated in an instant by Port Gasty Ace, unleashing a fierce hickin upon them. And the final faction we need to consider are the Unluckies. These two creatures, being codenamed Mr. 13 and Miss Friday, serve primarily as personal messengers for Crocodile himself. However, they are also charged with executing agents who fail or betray the organization. These two were eventually defeated by Sanji on Little Garden and were captured by the Marines who bribed them with a nice hot bowl of Donburi to provide information on Baroque Works agents. Now, as you've been informed, Baroque Works was mainly quashed by the Straw Hats who helped stop the Civil War in Alabaster with Monkey D. Luffy going on to beat Sir Crocodile who was then arrested along with many of his top officer agents. However, this was certainly not the end for the organization as their story continued in the Miss Golden Week's Meet Baroque Works cover story in which Marianne leads a rescue mission to break her former colleagues out of jail, leading to great success for all but Crocodile and Dust Bones who for no satisfactorily given reason decide to remain in jail and Mr. Three and Bon Clay are captured in the process with all four of them being sentenced to Impel Down. 
For the agents who did escape though, they all settled down together and started a business known as Spider's Cafe, which was named after one of their previous meeting spots. And as far as we're aware, to this day, the agents are still running their business. For the others though, they would go on to be a prominent feature of the Impel Down arc, with Galdino, Dust, Bones, Crocodile, and of course, Bonclay becoming members of Luffy's jailbreak gang. And Bonclay even went so far as to quote unquote sacrifice himself to impersonate the warden in order to allow them to escape. And when I say quote unquote sacrifice, I mean that he somehow survived his encounter with Magellan and remains in Impel Down to this day as the new queen of level 5.5. Meanwhile, the other three went on to be present at Marineford for the Paramount War with Galdino being the one who ultimately provided the key to Ace's freedom, however brief that freedom was. And after the war, he went on to join the crew of Buggy the Clown, who received an invitation to become a warlord of the sea. During this time, Crocodile and Dar's Bones very much formed their own separate party, although they did both assist Luffy directly. And following the conclusion of the war, they both entered the new world where they are still lurking at the time of this recording. Some more fun facts about Baroque works. During the end portion of the Miss Golden Week cover story, she activated a special colors trap that revealed the dreams of most of the officer agents, including Mr. One's dream to become a superhero and Crocodile's dream to become the Pirate King. The name of the organization comes from the artistic movement Baroque, which swept across Europe in the early 17th century and is characterized by an incredibly detailed and ornate style, which was applied to painting, architecture, dancing, music, and essentially any form of the arts available at the time. Miss Doublefinger's codename actually refers to New Year's Day, which when written as a date would be a double one. And apparently when Oda talks about dates, he uses his fingers to represent the month and the day. So he gave Zala the codename of Miss Doublefinger rather than Miss New Year's Day, despite the fact that it was essentially an in-joke for him and him alone. Also coincidentally, Oda's birthday is on New Year's Day. And finally, a truly useless fact, in the second One Piece movie being Clockwork Island Adventure, a representative from Baroque Works was allegedly present as the organization's Jolly Roger can be seen behind the going merry when it is captured. But that pretty much does it for Baroque Works. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but applied to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101.